hello guys you yeah, are welcome to my channel and today we'll be talking about the bony pelvis with emphasis on the female bony pelvis now it is important that as midwives we know about the bony pelvis because we know that that is where the baby would pass and come out from so if we know the anatomy of the bony pelvis we'll be able to tell when there are deviations from the normal and to be able to tell which woman can adequately have a normal spontaneous vaginal delivery and which woman cannot so basically when we do the there are certain things that we want to check for we want to look out for and a healthy and a knowledge of the anatomy of the female pelvis can help you do your examination and interpret your findings well to the benefit of your clients good so now this is the female pelvis sorry this is the female pelvis and it is the largest formation of bone in the skeletal system it is made up of four bones we have two innominate bones one sacrum and then one coccyx good so let me try to pull this apart and try and show you the innominate bone now the innominate bone is the biggest of all the four bones that form the um, bony pelvis so when you look at this structure a cross section or a bony pelvis that has been divided into two so you see that everything that you see here up to this point everything that you see here these things that are fused together is one innominate bone now the innominate bone is a fusion of three bones before the age of 25 you can see the differentiation between them so all the bones you have demarcation showing where which one starts and which which one ends but at 25 years everything fuses together so you have the ilium the ischium mm -hmm. and then the pubic bones fusing together to form the hip bone or the innominate bone so as i said earlier we have two innominate bones left and right and then we have the sacrum and then the coccyx forming the posterior border of the bone or the pelvic bone so i would say that the pelvic bone has an anterior border which is formed by the symphysis pubis which is a joint a joint formed by a cartilage good and then the posterior border which is formed by the sacrum and the coccyx now for it to be clear we know that the sacrum and the coccyx is a continuation of the spinal cord or the spinal vertebrae so the spinal vertebrae is also at our back so if this sacrum is a continuation then it means that the sacrum and the coccyx are forming the posterior border of your female pelvis or your pelvic bone good now there are certain landmarks or important points on this um, bone that we need to know about to help us um, practice efficiently as midwives now i'll talk about some of them so good now that we have established that this part is the front because that is where the synthesis pubis is remember that the synthesis pubis is that part of your body that your mons veneris that fat of uh, the part of fat that is in front of you or your vulva area this is what is protecting so this is in front and the sacrum is the back so everything that is facing here will be referred to as anterior and everything that is facing here will be referred to as posterior good now we have this point here which is known as the anterior superior iliac spine because it's the ilium and then we have this thick flattened portion here this is the place that you feel when you put your hands on your waist it is known as the iliac crest good now there's an important um, ligament that attaches from the iliac crest or the um, anterior superior iliac spine to the body of the pubis and that is known as the palpet gland palpet ligament or the inguinal ligament good then when we look at here we see another point here called the um, anterior inferior iliac spine inferior means below so it's below the superior that's why it's called a spine good and um, it's called um, a spine because it's a projection now there is this point here this line there's a line here i mean here there's a line here this line it is known as the iliopectineal line iliopectineal line the line that joins the ilium to the pubic bone is known as the iliopectilian line. And then there is a projection here or a point here. 
that is projected. It is known as the iliopectineal eminence. So this is where the pubic bone and the ilium meet. At that point, there's a projection there and it's called the iliopectineal eminence. Now you see the spots that is projected here. It's known as the pubic tubercle. Pubic tubercle. Now this part is known as the pubic bone. The main body of the pubic bone. This part, this part is the superior pubic ramus, inferior pubic ramus, symphysis pubis. Good. So we have spoken about this part and it applies to all of this part. Now there is something that I need to show you. Look at the sacrum. The first sacral bone is wide and it attaches to the ilium at this point. Now this point is called the sacroiliac joint. The sacrum and ilium, sacroiliac joint. At this same point, there is a ligament making sure that this joint is firm and that ligament is known as sacroiliac ligament. Now we have two sacroiliac joints because there are two iliums and the sacrum is attaching to the iliums at both sides. So the ala of the sacrum, the widening out portion of the sacrum is known as the ala of the sacrum, attaches to the ilium to form the sacroiliac joint. And on that same joint, we have sacroiliac ligament. Great. Now, let's look at this bone. This bone. This thickened portion. This thickened portion of the pelvic bone is known as the ischia, the ischium. Good, the ischium. Now, there are some landmarks here that you need to know about. We have the ischial tuberosity, where you sit on. A thickened portion where you sit on. You can sometimes feel it when you sit for a very long time. You feel pain there. This is known as the ischial tuberosity. Now, we have this point here. So this is the ischial tuberosity here and here is a sharp spine called the ischial spine this ischial spine determines whether your pelvic outlet will be adequate or not for normal female pelvis the ischial spine is blunt and short but for women who have male pelvis it is sharp and long so the longer and sharper this ischial spine is then the more problems you might have having babies out of your your pelvis normally good then we see these structures here this thing this hole here and then this hole here now this hole here is called acetabulum it is formed by the three innominate bones so the ilium the ischium and the pubis come together to form this cup shaped um, depression here this is where your femur attaches this is where your femur attaches so without this your femur which is the longest bone in your body won't get a place to attach and you can't walk now we have another hole here okay this is it this hole here it is called obturator foramen it is formed by by the ischium and the, the pubic bone so the acetabulum is formed by these three bones, but the obturator foramen is formed by just the ischium in the pubic bone. It is a route for um, nerve cells, blood vessels. So blood vessels and nerve cells passes this to supply the organs in the pelvic bone. Great. So we will talk about um, this other part here, this hole here. We call this the greater sciatic notch. Now we hear a lot of um, content on the radio talking about sciatica, sciatica, sciatica. Now this hole is where the sciatic nerve passes. This is the greater sciatic notch and this is the lesser sciatic notch. Remember the ischial spine. The ischial spine 
the um, divides the sciatic notch into two the lesser the lesser and then the greater now when you are giving injections you are told to always give it at the upper outer quadrant that reason being that we want to avoid piercing through the sciatic notch you have the sciatic nerve passing there and this is the major cell the major nerve cell um, nerve that supplies your lower body so when you by chance enter into this space you are going to put the nerve at risk and probably cause some paralysis to uh, your patient so when you say divide the bottles into an upper um, four quadrants and then inject at the upper outer quadrants this notch is what you are trying to prevent now we are going to end our discussion here for today uh, subsequently i'm going to post post on how to measure you know the diameters the divisions of the pelvis so that um we can continue from there so basically some important landmarks the symphysis pubis the allow of the sacrum the sacral promontory the iliopectineal line iliopectineal eminence um obturator foramen acetabulum ischial tuberosity ischial spine good so thank you for your time have a nice day